G'day everyone, thought I'd take you through something a little bit different today. As the people that follow me know, I mostly shoot in the standard profile due to the fact that I'm shooting hybrid uh, and I just don't have the time to do much grading and things like that and I've found the standard profile in fact is good enough for what I do. The only area where it really falls down if you do need the ultimate dynamic range, that's where you have to use one of the profiles. Uh, and in this case I've just shot with the um, HLG profile and I wanted to show you how I set that up and even how I grade it in Final Cut. Uh, there are a couple of things that you've got to uh, take in attention here. I'm using a uh, software called uh, Leaming LUT to get um, the actual LUTs into Final Cut and it does help with that exposure and setting everything initially. Um, but uh, the thing too is you've also got to understand that you have to nail your exposure and things like that uh, in camera. Now I it does tell you in Leaming LUT that you should shoot in 4K. Now I did find that with the 1080p video with the A6500 that I used, it is way softer than what I was getting with um, the uh, A9 or the A7 III. Uh, but due to the fact that I wanted to slow um, Kate down, I decided to shoot 1080p. Uh, and being here in Australia, it was 1080 50. Um, so therefore you have to have your uh, shutter speed at double that. So I, I had to have the shutter speed at 1 100th of a second. Okay, so if you look there, what I've done is you just have to have 1 100th of a second in the exposure. That is doubling your frame rate. So you just don't go outside of that. Uh, you know, and that's basically how you get that. And if you do uh, want to adjust uh, anything, then you just use a variable ND to get your exposure corrects, uh, correct so that you're not changing uh, your shutter speed uh, at all. Now to set up your settings, which is uh, 11 of 14, and you go down to picture profiles. Now the settings that I actually used here was PP10. It doesn't really matter, you can use any of these settings and just change it inside. There's no uh, difference really. Uh, like some, there is some um, people talking online about uh, different settings does different things. Uh, they don't, you can change them to be anything inside here. You know, in fact, if you go to PP10, so you can change the gamma to whatever you'd like uh, and things like that. Well, I'm using, there is four of these HLG ones in there. There's HLG, HLG 1, 2 and 3. Now, I've, I've looked at it and I like HLG the most. It seems to give uh, the most dynamic range and the nicest color that will come out uh, from the camera. The only other thing that's got to be changed is this color mode. Uh, you can obviously see change to things like S gamut, S gamut 3 sign, etc. Uh, but uh, it tells you to use BT20. Now that's because I'm using that Leaming LUT, which I'll take you through a little bit later and show uh, how that works. And the color bit depth or the color detail down here um, or the sharpness is where it actually told me uh, I believed in the Leaming LUTs to make it minus seven but I'm not sure about that because I'll show you that a little bit later where that's mentioned those settings that you meant to put in but I had set them on minus seven uh, and I believe that that has caused that image to be very very soft. I think with the A6 uh, 400 series you can't go down uh, that low it might be that you use something like minus two or minus three or even keep it on uh, your normal uh, just zero uh, setting there as well. It's something you're gonna have to play around with, but it won't change uh, the overall uh, color correction that I'm going to show you um, shortly. So that doesn't matter. Uh, just ignore that little bit of softness until there's more testing done. And then all I did was I balanced uh, the exposure just using an ND. So that let me keep my shutter speed at double the frame rate. Uh, and that's how I actually did that. So, and it seemed to work really good. So what we'll do now is I'll open up um, Final Cut and I'll show you how you can manipulate the image uh, to look like uh, you know a, a normal image that you'd see in the standard profile or something like that with exposure and everything else. So we, before we go over to Final Cut, I thought I'd show you uh, what LUTs I used and what settings. Uh, this will tell you what settings that you actually have to set in your camera. And it's a really good system. And it's, it's actually Leaming LUT. Uh, it's this system here uh, that I paid for. Um, so I didn't get this for free. I've, uh, I, they don't, um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. So I actually purchased this, but they're reasonably, uh, ex really cheap really for what you're getting. So it's called Leaming LUT Pro. Uh, and it seems to work fantastic. Um, and what it does, it's it's a system that works with a number of cameras and it will work with uh, log as well as the HLG profiles as well. And it tells you how to set everything up 
uh, at, as well at the same time. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see that they've got Panasonic, Blackmagic Design, Sony. They even have uh, DJI Mavic Pros as well as Canon and GoPros and everything else. So they'll work with so many different cameras. Um, and the thing too about it is that um, they also continuously update them and that's one great thing as well so now that I've paid for them I keep getting updates uh, you can see here that the Sony version I've got was 25 euro and that's what I got uh, and it um, basically like I said it, it works with um, Sign 2, S-Log 2, S-Log 3 and HLG uh, as well and I think they're just about to do another release that works better with the HLG uh, and the interesting thing though is that they give you this setup guide except you'll see that this is the Sony camera setup guide and it's version 6 uh, which has just been updated and then it gives you a breakdown about all the settings that you actually put into your camera whether you're using PP1, PP2, PP3 or HLG and so it tells you what settings uh, that you actually put in and I think this is where um, I'm, I'm not sure whether I made a mistake because with that detail setting, because I noticed under PP1 it's saying you have minus seven there. I'm wondering whether you only put minus seven as the, uh, if you're doing this version, it might be that because a minus seven wasn't listed here that you leave it as standard. But I noticed when I went online, most people were saying that they were putting minus seven in as their uh, detail due to the fact that they didn't want that uh, too sharp looking and you could add sharpness later uh, in post but I found that when I put it at minus seven even when I added uh, the sharpening in post later on it just didn't seem to look right but so it does tell you that if you're using for instance S-Log2 it tells you what your color mode will be S-Gamut it tells you if you're using the PP4 and that's PP10 on the A6400 that you put in HLG and it's BT2020 now uh, that setting seems to be the same no matter uh, what HLG you're using. It just seems to change the, the color a little bit. Uh, so I changed it and used the latest version, which is HLG3. Uh, and it also tells you uh, the picture profile settings as well uh, down here. And it tells you what zebra setting to put in uh, as well. And so I set my zebra settings at uh, 95 plus. And it says basically uh, that don't forget to adjust your zebras each time you change picture profiles otherwise the ETTR exposure to the right uh, warning function of zebras will not uh, work as intended and it also gives you a message about if you're using the LUT in um, something like the Ninja V or whatever you turn that LUT off or even the LUT in camera uh, due to the fact that that can affect the uh, zebras from showing correctly uh, and so I did set it at 95 uh, in the camera and then it also tells you how you can set some custom buttons and things like that and it tells you how to expose correctly um, as well so it, it's really quite extensive on how this works so all I did was I set the uh, the zebras to uh, 95 or 95 plus and then what you do is you just balance your camera so those zebra settings disappear now I'll show you that okay so all I did was I just went to the menu and then clicked on zebra settings and then obviously you have them displayed on and you want them 95. Now I did see that in the uh, Leeming LUTs they ask you to put 95 plus and it doesn't have 95 plus here and that could be one of the reasons why I was a little bit underexposed because what you're meant to do is set your, ze uh, your zebras to 95 plus and then you just expose, say for instance where you see the light there, you would just um, alter your uh, ND filter, I'll just change the ISO at the moment, and until the flashing lights go. Now they won't show on here due to the fact that uh, I'm coming out through HDMI. Um, but what I found was I tended to like to use the uh, exposure rating down the bottom. See where it says plus three on it at the moment? I like to, I worked out that for me, the best exposure was when that was about plus seven on the object that I wanted to maintain uh, with optimal exposure. I could sometimes go up to, uh, up to plus one. The only thing was with plus one, uh, you, you did have the chance of uh, clipping the highlights a little bit, whereas plus seven, it didn't seem to clip uh, the highlights at all, and that gave me uh, a better exposure. Uh, you might find that if you did have uh, 95 plus, in the settings for uh, 
uh, the zebras or zebras that uh, that would probably give you a plus seven anyway. Some people I read said you should have as uh, just zero on your uh, main subject that you're uh, exposing on. Like for if you had a bride, for instance, you'd have zero on the bride. But I found that uh, I could go a little bit higher than that. And that's why I found that I like the plus seven. Uh, and that worked really uh, wonderfully uh, in the exposure a little bit later on. Okay, so let's look at what happens here. Now you'll notice straight away that when we look at this, uh, if you if this was exposed for a normal uh, television or computer monitor, you'll see that at the 100 line, uh, that's where your exposure would have to be between. So you'd be in this area here. But you'll notice due to the fact this, that this is HLG, uh, and it's you know high, uh, high dynamic range uh, type image, that you've got uh, exposures that are above the 100. Now that's saying to you that the detail is still there. You can even see that they're not clipping. Uh, so even though that the image looks like it's way overexposed, I mean, if you look here at Kate's uh, white top and all these lights and everything, they all look like they're way overexposed. Uh, and that's the issue with uh, looking at this type of um, format on a normal uh, computer monitor. You can see here too how much that Kate looks like she's actually overexposed. Uh, I mean, she looks like she's way overexposed, you know, in the top and stuff like that uh, through here. But she's actually not. It's actually the, the profile that you're shooting in gives you more detail than you actually uh, can see on a normal screen. Now, the way you can see this is the first thing you have to do if you're using Final Cut is to conform this to uh, Rec. 709. Now, the way that you do that is you actually open up uh, this area here, which is the information up the top. It's just this little button that you see actually here. So if I open that up here, now all you do is you'll notice down here that there's two things that you actually uh, have to change, which is the color space override and the camera LUT. This is where you'll get the leaming LUT put in, and the, uh, it tells you how to install that uh, in the notes that you get with the leaming LUT, uh, and also this color screen override. So if I now go up to here, and I click on this color space override, you'll notice that there's different color spaces that you can conform to. Well, I want Rec. 709, which is the standard profile that we use uh, for YouTube and, and my monitor and everything else. So if I go Rec. 709, you'll see immediately how much that's darkened down. Now, the, the issue here is that it was actually quite dark when I shot this. Uh, it was very, very late. This was just before uh, the sun had gone down completely, so it was actually very, very dull uh, through here. The second thing that I do is load the LUT. So if I come down here and I load the Leaming LUT 1 and HLG LUT, you can see it's a little bit darker again, uh, and then I'm just going to manipulate this a little bit up to be where it roughly was uh, on that day. Uh, if I was going to do this fully, I was just doing this to give a quick review, I should have lit Kate up. And that's the thing that I would have done. I would have used the Profoto B10 to throw some continuous light on her. Then she would have stood out from the background much, much more. Uh, but don't look at that at this stage. Uh, and I'll, I'll finish this and then we'll go on to the second one so you can have a look at how we actually expose uh, for the second one as well. Um, so all I do now is I go over to here and I want to use the uh, color wheels. Uh, and you can see here that uh, if we look at Kate, I'm just going to find a spot there where it's showing her uh, overall uh, that I can look at. Like I said, she probably really should have been lit, but now I can just play around. Now you'll see at the moment that uh, the highlights are just clipping the 100, and that's due to these lights that are in the background. Uh, I, like I said, if I'd lit Kate up, that I could have just held that exposure, which is pretty close to how it was. I'm just going to play with this until I get a look that I'm actually happy with something in between somewhere. Uh, and I'm going to go around about here uh, with the highlights, uh, probably around about there because I might bring the midtones up a bit too. I'm going to drag the shadows down so they'll hit that 100 line. And I can even play around with the midtones too if I want to give it a little lift in the midtones and then uh, brighten up the master just to give a little bit more color into the background as well. And I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, uh, remember she should have probably been lit up here to get a perfect exposure. Uh, but I was just doing this to demonstrate uh, uh, a bit of filming that I'd done. Uh, the same with this one. Let's go to this exposure. You can see she looks completely blown out. Again, I'm going to check that she is conformed to the color space, which is Rec. 709. Uh, and then I'm going to load the LUT into this as well, which is Sony HLG LUT. 
Uh, you can see how that's kept that beautifully for the highlights in there. Like I said, if she was lit up now, uh, this would have looked absolutely stunning. Again, I'm just going to go back to the color wheels uh, and I'm just going to play around with this just to give it a little bit of a lift, uh, a bit in the mid-tones and then drag those shadows down again uh, through here and then uh, give it a little lift in the color uh, to come up as well. Uh, and that's basically it. Okay, so you can see now that I've slowed this down, I love the look of slow motion, uh, particularly with girls walking and things like that and the jacket moving uh, around it. It's just beautiful. So you can see Kate's doing this very, very well. Um, again, I'm just moving around here, but you can see that it's held the color great. Uh, the beautiful thing about using HLG is that I can have an ISO of 125. So that's one of the big advantages of using uh, that profile instead of the uh, S-Log ones, which is much higher. But overall, I'm really happy with um, you know how this looked. Uh, she should have been lit though, which would have made her look absolutely amazing if she was actually lit. Um, I thought that I'd... Um, share that with you. It was using the Leeming LUT that I discussed a little bit earlier uh, to get the, pro, the LUT in, um, but it seems to work very, very well and very easy. Let me know what you think about that down below. I'd love to know what your uh, opinion about this is. Uh, like I said, the image was a little bit soft, which I was a little bit disappointed about, but that is something that I, you may have to live with if you're shooting with the A6400 in 1080p. But I could definitely sharpen that image up if I didn't shoot at 1.8 like I did. I was shooting wide open and with the minus 7 for detail. And that was definitely an issue that uh, I think I'm going to have to have a play around with. I think probably what I'll do now is it, uh, it might be that I use minus 1 or 2, something like that if I'm shooting in 1080p. Uh, and definitely with that lens, particularly with that Sony uh, 24 1.8, it, it was a little bit soft, wide open. It's certainly sharp and way up if I, uh, you know, uh, close down the aperture a little bit. Uh, that's all for now, guys, and I'll see you all soon in the next video. Bye for now.